Hi guys, Anthony here from The Hot End. In this episode, I'm going to show you the new Zortrax suite, which now opens up external filaments to be used on their Zortrax printer. So only a couple of weeks ago, Zortrax released a firmware update for the M200 and M300 series printers, as well as a new software suite, which is version 1.10. The big advantage of these new updates are they have now officially opened up the printer to be able to use external filaments. Um, as you would have seen by Joel's review and my upcoming review, the Zortrax printer is a fantastic printer as you would expect for the price of uh, two and a half thousand US somewhere thereabouts But its main drawback was that you had to use Zortrax filaments. There was no override for temperature um, You couldn't adjust print settings too much. It was pretty pretty restricted into what it would let you do so they've listened to the community and they have now opened up officially in the software the ability to do temperature overrides and uh, use whatever kind of filament you like. So I'll show you some of those features now. This is the primary Zortrax suite software that you'll see. You'll see here that I've just loaded in a pencil holder. Nothing fancy here. The suite itself is very simple to use. All your tools are over here, so you can rotate, move, resize. Uh, I think that one's center to bed or auto arrange. Or if you've got multiple um, parts or models on there, you can split them into separate movable pieces. Now, the big feature that's happened with version 1.10 is you now have advanced settings here, which allow you to choose the material group. Ordinarily, you would only have Zortrax materials, but now they've opened up external. Over in the material type, you can choose what kind of materials you like. ABS, HIPS, PETG, uh, like a tea glass or a polycarbonate ABS based filament. It still doesn't support PLA, but um, that's fine. The prints that you get off this are absolutely mint. Over in the layer thickness, these are the defaults which it reckons are the best for ABS on this printer. And I generally go at uh, 0 0.19 or 0 0.14. Previously, uh, these options didn't exist. So you weren't able to change your temperatures, it was just set. So if I go back to Zortrax materials, this is about all you could choose. You choose what kind of material it is, your infill, uh, any kind of support you need and very very minimal uh, minimal settings to play with but in saying that it does just work so in some situations that is the ideal for like a school environment that doesn't mind too much how much material costs over getting a consistently good print I still recommend the Zortrax materials if you can afford it or if you've got access, easy access to their filaments but, in saying that, the more experienced can now use external materials. So in here we can set the temperature. So obviously 275 is a bit too harsh for ABS, so I usually drop this back to 250. Platform temperature of 80, I usually go up to 90. Um, speed is relatively slow, but you can crank it up. And then in here you set your infill percentage, which is just high, medium, low, mesh or shell or maximum. I set uh, medium, or usually. For this model here, I don't want supports, so zero, uh, zero degrees, we'll turn that off. And then prepare to print. One of the drawbacks with the software is it can run a little bit slower to slice. But that's only on certain models um, and it's you can sort of compare it to simplify 3d or cura um, but it is its own thing so it, it is what it is okay so that's still slicing we're at 58 percent 59 you can see that it does slice slower than some of the other slices out there but it does a, a great job 
most of the models that I've printed. Um, I've been using the Zortrax now for, wow, six months, I think. Const uh, constant, non-stop, trying to really thrash the machine to make sure that it is worthy of a tick of approval. And I think I've had one, one or two failures in that entire time. And that was either due to the filament um, jamming, meaning uh, like the spool got caught and it couldn't feed, so it had a filament snag. And the other time was I actually had a warp, which was because I didn't clean the bed properly. So they both of those are user inflicted errors. So you would you would have seen off Joel's video, he also had similar performance issues with the software. But um, if you can get past that, it is quite a really good piece of software. There's not much to do, it just does it for you. So you can see here, this is the preview of the G-code, which Zortrax calls Z-code or Z-code. I don't believe you can use other slices with this. It's pr proprietary, specifically for the reason to um, keep a good output with minimal technical knowledge required. So Zortrax opening up the system to third-party filament really is a game changer because previously the Zortrax was kind of limited in its market to schools or professional printers that could justify the cost versus the time of stuff around. So what I mean by that is with the cheaper printers, you generally will get a really good print, but there is a usually a much greater stuff around time. So you're going to have fail prints, dialing in settings, um, the usual. But with a printer of this level or caliber, you don't have to go through a lot of that pain and trial and error. You can generally just hit print and walk away without even watching the first layer go down, which I know is quite... Uh, I wouldn't say controversial, but it's not really best practice. But with a higher end machine, it does just work, so you can get away with it. So I will be doing a full review on the Zortrax M200 very, very soon. I've just had some health issues um, and that is put back the schedule. So with the print quality, um, I don't actually have an Ultimaker 3 here to compare it against. But I'd be very confident to say that this will, this will, um, it will match or equal anything else on the market currently. And considering this is printing ABS and getting fantastic prints, like near perfect every time, that's all you can ask from a printer. Sure, you pay for it. Uh, like I said, it's about 2,500 US. But how much is your time worth to stuff around and get things right? If you want a printer that just prints, then the Zortrax is the go. Now, this is the first print, excuse me. This here is the first print that I've done on the Zortrax using the official external filament option. Um, I did some more previously, but it was terribly over overheating the filament because it was locked previously and Zortrax filaments inherently print at a much higher temperature to try and lock you in. But now that that's not a factor, I printed this in Aurarum uh, ABS at 250C at uh, 019 layer height. Uh, I printed it fairly slow because I wanted it to work and this one took nearly 48 hours. And like I said, this is ABS and this was printed in a single piece um, as is off printer. All you need to do is there's four little tabs that you need to break off to unlock the mechanism. And this is the iris print. This is a all-in-one remix. And as you can see, works beautifully. So hopefully you can see that in focus. But as you would expect from a printer of this kind and this, this level, it did just work and it is nearly perfect. There's um, one slight line here, which may or may not pick up on camera, but I think that was due to my dodgy filament, um, the stand. I think the spool got, got caught as it was feeding, so that's my own fault. But the print itself works beautiful. 
So this is, like I said, single piece, straight off the printer without any um, cleanup or anything. Because this is ABS, I might get away with a slight vapor smooth, but I'd have to be very careful with this one because you don't want the petals of the iris to um, get gummed up. So I might actually have a go with just using um, acetone and a paintbrush just on the outside areas just to make it look extra pretty. So I hope you like this update and I very much thank Zortrax for opening up their software to external filaments. This is no longer a barrier in people not picking the Zortrax. Um, this will, like I said before, this will rival and match anything on the market. So if you want a printer that just works, I highly recommend you get the Zortrax and there will be more um, reviews of the Zortrax coming up in the near future. Anyway guys, I hope you like this little update. Um, please like and subscribe if you like the content. Um, we've got a couple of contests running at the moment in conjunction with TiVo, which I'll put in the description. And we're nearing the 10k mark of subscribers. So thanks so much guys for all of your support. It allows us to buy new equipment like this new microphone and uh, software to run my DSLR as a webcam for much better quality picture. When we get to 10k, I'm going to, well, I'm in the process of organizing a printer giveaway, another one. Um, I don't want to give away too much yet because I'm still trying to work out which printer to give away. It won't be one of my, my personal ones, but it will be one of the ones that I've reviewed or that I have currently. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that, but make sure you subscribe and then you'll, um, you'll get a notification when that video is out. Now in terms of the channel, um, due to my health at the moment and other life commitments, I am kind of handing the channel over to my dad and he's going to be doing the primary um, running day-to-day -day tasks of, of the channel and I'll still do video updates and reviews as normal. But he's going to take over the, the other side of the business which most of you wouldn't see. But anyway guys, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe, it helps us out a bunch. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers guys.